Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day and thanks so much for joining me today for another art video. A few of you have been reaching out asking me for tutorials on painting simple, easy, beginner-friendly flowers. And so what I have for you today is a tutorial on painting five simple flowers. I am keeping these as simple as possible, most of them just with one single layer of paint. I am keeping the colors relatively simple as well, and I am going to be explaining every single step of the way. So even though these are beginner friendly, I also feel that they are an awesome exercise for people who are a little bit more advanced, who maybe don't have that much time to continue practicing, but they want to stay consistent with their watercoloring. This is an awesome exercise for you to continue practicing your water and your brush control and to stay consistent with your practice, even in those days in which maybe you don't have energy to focus as much or to make that much of an effort. Today we're going to be practicing tulips, lavender, cone flowers, little wildflowers, and roses. And the way that I've organized today's tutorials is I am going to get started with the flowers that I would personally consider to be the simplest or easiest, and we're making our way incrementally towards the most challenging one, which I consider to be the rose. Now, of course, we all have different strengths and weaknesses, so one of these may very well be easier for you uh, than it was for me or harder for you than it was for me, which by the way, if you go through all of these and you'd like to share which one was the hardest for you and which one was the easiest for you, do let me know in the comments section down below. I would be super interested in knowing. We're gonna be practicing the wet on dry technique today. We're gonna be painting on dry paper. If at any point in time throughout any of these flowers you want to drop in more paint, whether it's a little bit more of that same color that you were previously using for that initial layer or a different color, you can go ahead and do that while that first layer of paint is still wet. I'm gonna be using two round brushes for all of these flowers and these are rounds in sizes six and four. All of the colors that I'm gonna be using today are from my St. Petersburg White Nights full pan paint set. And the specific colors that I am using are Matter Lake Red Light, Cadmium Lemon, Golden Deep, Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Ultramarine Violet, and Burnt Umber. I'm going to be working on watercolor paper from Hanemule, and this is a watercolor block. The paper is 140 pounds and it is cold press. As always, you're gonna be able to find all of the supplies that I'm gonna be using for these tutorials down below in the description box in case you'd like to go and check them out. As you can see, I created quite a few different color mixers for myself on my color mixing palette before getting started. All of these are combinations of two of the aforementioned colors. The green is what I'm gonna be using for the stems and the leaves of all of my different flowers. This is sap green plus a little bit of my matter lake red light, which of course red is complementary to green in the color wheel. So it's going to mute it out, darken it, and make it look a little bit more natural. I also have a couple of mixtures of lighter yellow orange and darker orange created with mixtures of my golden deep and my cadmium lemon and a dark gray created with ultramarine blue and burnt umber these are all for the cone flowers i have a couple of different reds prepared one of them is a mixture of matter lake red light plus a little bit of that orange color which i selected for myself and the other is Matter Lake Red Light plus a little bit of Ultramarine Violet. So I'm gonna be using those for the roses and also for the tulips. And of course, I also have my bluish purple prepared for my lavender. And that's just a mixture of Ultramarine Violet and Ultramarine Blue. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the very first flower, which is going to be the tulip. So I am using my size six round brush for this one and for the tulip we're using a lot of C strokes. So I start out by creating that middle petal 
right in the central most part of that petal section in this tulip. And once that initial petal is in there, I go ahead and use two C strokes going off on each side of that central petal. I start at the top and make my way down. You can see how in those C strokes, the top section is thicker or wider and it gets tapered in or more narrow as that shape nears the bottom of the base of that initial central petal. And the way that I am doing this is by pressing down my brush a little bit more at the top when I get started with that C stroke, and then I release the pressure off my paintbrush as I am making my way down. When I am nearing that final little point at the bottom there, it's very, very thin because it's just the very tip of my paintbrush touching the paper at that point. You can see how, especially in that central largest petal, I've left a few highlights in which that paper is shining through completely. And this helps me just prevent flatness, especially in those larger shapes that I am creating. You can also notice in all of these how I've left a sliver of white paper shining through in between the majority of those edges in between the different petals. And this is going to be key, not only for this flower, but for many of the flowers that we're gonna be painting next. It's important that you actually create a little separation between at least the majority of the shapes that you're painting in for your different petals, otherwise they're all going to merge together and you're gonna create a blob or a shape and it's not really going to look like separate petals. So this doesn't mean that the, entire, uh, the entirety of those petals need to be separated from each other. They actually connect in certain parts, but you can see how I've left that sliver of white paper just completely shining through along the edges of the majority of these petals. Once you've created your three main petals, that central one and the two on either side, it's up to you if you wanna add in that top little tiny abstract shape that creates the illusion of the back petal kind of peeping out from behind these three petals. You can see how I've added that in in a couple of these, and I also just created a little bit of an extra petal here and there in a couple. That is completely optional. But whatever it is that you decide to add in, just make sure that you're keeping everything very irregular and that you are seeing the shapes for the petals that you're painting in as abstract, just irregular shapes. Because what we're painting today, flowers just like with any other natural organic element, there is a lot of imperfection and irregularity involved, and you don't want to make anything look too organized, too stiff, or too patterny. That is going to take away from that natural look. And this is really key. It goes for all of the different flowers that we're gonna be painting today. All right, so you can see how I've finished up with the petal sections in these four tulips. And I am now going in with my size four round brush to paint in the stems and the long leaves. And this is again, my mixture of sap green plus a little bit of my Matter Lake Red Light. I like starting at the base of those petals with a little V shape and make my way down with as much as a consistent um, single stroke as I possibly can, using the tip of my paintbrush for the most part. With your stems in, it's time to paint in the leaves, which are also an amazing way to practice your brush control, because with the leaves, you also have to press down more, exert more pressure on the paper in that thickest or largest part of the leaf and then release that pressure in the more narrow, thinner sections. What I like doing is I like barely touching the tip of my paintbrush nearest to the stem, and then I press down a little bit more to create that illusion of the larger, thicker portion of that leaf, and then I release that pressure again. So barely touching the tip to pressing down to releasing again. 
it definitely takes practice and time to do these single strokes uh, like we're doing for these stems and the leaves and some of these petals. So do not get frustrated with yourself. I know it definitely took me time to get them right to get a hold of that brush control. What's cool about these quicker doodles, these quicker little paintings, is that you can literally do 10 or 15 of these in a short period of time and you can see the progress in a very short amount of time. Okay, so right here, I just wanted to show you what these tulips would look like with a second layer of just a quick little detailing there in some of these petals and some of these flowers. So essentially, after everything had dried, I am going in with my smaller brush and I am adding a second layer of this red, only in certain little portions here and there, where I want to darken some of that red and just maybe create the illusion of some of those veins in some of these petals. You can totally feel free to leave these as you know a single layer kind of doodle. That is completely up to you. Okay, and with that, we are done with our tulips. Let's go ahead and get started with the lavender. So I'm gonna be using just my size four round brush for all of these. And of course, I made sure to remove all of the previous color from my paintbrush bristles before getting started with the second set of flowers. So a characteristic of lavender is that they are very vertical. They're kind of tall, if I could call it that. Um, so it's important to visualize um, uh, not a super perfect vertical line, but somewhat of a vertical line in which all of these small little flowers are kind of attached to, right? So I am visualizing this in my head, that base kind of line, stem, whatever it is called, I'm visualizing it as I am laying down these little tiny flowers. And all I am doing here as I am visualizing that middle, that central stem that is holding these little flowers together is I am pressing down um, my paintbrush bristles, making sure that the tip of the paintbrush bristles is what would come into contact with that central stem. I'm just pressing down and lifting and pressing down and lifting and so on and so on without really dragging my paintbrush at all. And this creates a little teardrop kind of uh, shape. Make sure that you keep everything very irregular. Once again, it's very easy to start uh, just being way too organized about the way that you are creating these little shapes. And you don't want that. You wanna make sure that there is a lot of irregularity and imperfection present. Um, otherwise, you're gonna be left with a pattern and you could be left with um, something that would look like Vs and that's not gonna look very natural. So you can see how there is a lot of irregularity and imperfection present throughout my little uh, stacks of these little shapes. Some of these are even overlapping in certain sections. You can see how I've grouped or clumped them together in different ways. And I left little sections in which those flowers um, are slightly more separated away from each other because I knew since the beginning that I wanted to be able to see a little bit of that green stem in between some of these little purple shapes. All right, so I cleaned out all of that purple from my paintbrush bristles and I am now going in to paint in the stems and the leaves. The way that I am painting in the stems and the leaves is almost exactly the same as with the first set of flowers. I am making sure to work from the top part of that stem closest to the petal section downwards, making sure that I am barely touching the tip of my paintbrush. If it gets a little bit thicker in some sections, that's perfectly okay, but I am doing my best to have one same consistent brush stroke as I make my way down. And I am doing the same thing with the leaves, starting with that section closest to the stem with just the tip of my paintbrush, then pressing down, making my way upwards and outwards and then releasing once again as I am nearing the very final little point of that 
of that leaf so that I can have that tapered out look. It's very important that we actually see your reference photos for the different flowers that we're going to be painting because we want to bring in the characteristics that are particular to that kind of flower if we're looking to make our doodles or quick paintings look like that actual flower. And so I made sure to look at reference photos for all of these and took into account the length, the shape of their leaves and things like that so that I can make sure to modify the length of, the lengths of my strokes and my different techniques to bring in these characteristics. It's always so, so important to look at reference photos if we wanna bring in any sort of level of realism into our paintings. Otherwise, we run the risk of painting whatever subject it is we're painting the way we think it looks like and not what it actually looks like. Okay, let's move on to the third set of flowers, which is going to be the cone flowers. For these, I'm actually going to be alternating between my two brushes, my size four and my size six. Initially, I get started with the smaller paintbrush as I am doing that scribbling to create that texture and that kind of rounded out look, that raised look in that center part of these flowers. To paint in the central part of those flowers, I am using my dark gray color mixture that I created by mixing together the burnt umber with the ultramarine blue. You can decide if you want to use a dark brown instead of a full on dark gray. It's just a matter of playing around with the ratios of your burnt umber versus ultramarine blue in your color mixture. Essentially, if you have more brown in it, it's going to look like a dark brown. And if you have more blue in it, it's going to look like a dark blue. And then if you have kind of a 50-50 ratio, it's going to look like a dark gray. And then with that central portion painted in, I switched on over to my size six round brush. I loaded it up with my lighter yellow orange color and I am creating these long petal shapes, bringing them down or down and in a slight curve from that central section of this flower. If you touch the tip of your paintbrush to that gray as you're painting in these petals, that gray is likely to bleed into the petals. It's up to you if you want that to happen. It can look pretty cool. Personally, I just started that very tiny section of that upper part of that petal slightly away from that central part because I didn't want that bleeding to happen, but it's up to you if you want to have those bleeds occur. As you're painting in this flower, I feel it's super, super important to really visualize the um, overall structure for the petal portions of these kinds of flowers because with cone flowers, the petals are drooping down and at the same time, they're all coming out of the central part of the flower. So it's important to have that in mind as you're just drawing in these shapes. And it's kind of the same technique that I've been using to paint in the leaves of these flowers so far. So I start with the very tip of my paintbrush nearest that central section of the flower, and then I press down a little bit more and then I release. So just the tip to pressing down to just the tip again. And that creates a thin to thick to back to thin, a tapered out look, pointy look to the end of those petals. With that initial yellow or light orange painted in, you can feel free to drop in the darker orange while that color is still wet so that you can have a little bit of interest and color variation throughout your petals. You can also see that I've added a couple of smaller little abstract shapes that create the illusion of the furthest petals away from us on opposite to us um, that are slightly peeping out from these petals that we're able to see completely. All right, so moving on to flower number four, and these are going to be the little wildflowers. I decided to go with purple again for these, though it's a slightly different purple than the one that I was using for my lavender. This is actually, it has a little bit more of that uh, matter lake red light in it. So 
I think I created this one by mixing together my red with my ultramarine blue, but you can use whichever color it is you'd like. Wildflowers come in all sorts of colors. So essentially what I was doing with this one, and I am using my size six round brush by the way, is I was going for more of a rounded out petal look, but at the same time, I wanted those edges to be irregular. I didn't want them to be, um, you know, per perfect rounded edge. And so the way that I am doing this is I'm actually approaching painting in those petals with separate brush strokes, curving, kind of curved brush strokes. And that creates the illusion of jagged, irregular edges, but at the same time, I'm able to leave little tiny highlights where the paper is shining through completely. I'm using both my paintbrushes for these flowers. Right now, I am using my size six round brush to paint in the petals. And in just a bit, I'm gonna switch on back to my size four round brush to paint in a little bit of yellow in that central part of the flowers, as well as the stems and the leaves. I'm really just painting four petals for each little flower. And as with everything so far, it's very important to continue visualizing where those petals are stemming from where they are growing out of, right? If you stop visualizing that along the way, it's very easy to start painting in petals um, and have them look like they are floating in the air or like they're not really part of the same flower and stuff. So continue visualizing that central little part of that flower, even if you didn't paint it in or sketch it in. As you can see, I am leaving plenty of that central little portion free of color because in just a bit, I'm gonna be dropping in some yellow orange in there to just add a little bit of, of interest in that central part of that flower and just make these flowers a little bit more colorful. Another thing is you can see how for that bottom petal in many of these, not all of them, but many of these, that bottom petal has a slightly different shape than the top petals. And I wanted to do this because I didn't want to paint in all of these petal shapes with the exact same shape and have that flower look like it was completely flat and forward facing, if that makes any sense. And I thought that if I create at least one of those petals in a slightly different shape, it would help me transmit that illusion of that flower being slightly upturned instead of being completely flat facing towards us. All right, so I finished up painting the petals and they were pretty much completely dry by the time I dropped in a little bit of that light orange in that central part of the flower. So the orange didn't really bleed into the purple. If the purple had still been wet, then that orange would have bled into that wetness because watercolor is always going to expand into paper that is wet. So if you don't want that to happen, make sure that those petals have dried completely. And if you do want it to happen, that could be cool as well. Okay. So after having painted in that light orange, I am now using the smaller brush as well to paint in the stems and the leaves. And I wanted some of them to have little tiny highlights throughout them. And approaching the leaves in a couple of different brush strokes or three brush strokes even, helps me create those tiny slivers of highlights throughout them instead of using just one same stroke um, but one, one stroke could also be beautiful. I just wanted to show you how to create slightly different leaves. I wanted them to be thinner essentially for these flowers and I wanted to have a few little highlights throughout them. Okay, and the last thing I am doing right here, and this is completely optional, but everything is dry and I've just added in a little bit of a darker value and a little bit more I guess you could say vein texture in just a few of these petals by going over them with very loose little curved strokes uh, using my smaller brush and this same purple color. And then one last little detail that I also decided to add in before leaving these be is adding in a slightly darker 
um, orangish, brownish color in that central part of that flower to create a little bit of a variety of different values even in that central part. And all I did to create that color was to add in a little bit of my burnt umber, which is the dark brown that I am using for some of my other color mixtures. I added that into my uh, light orange color mixer to darken it a little bit. Okay, so moving on to the very last set of flowers that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And in my personal opinion, these are the hardest of all. I have done so many drills of this particular flower, I cannot even begin to explain. So do not get frustrated if these don't turn out well in the first try, second try, third try. I promise you it took me way longer than that. I've painted these so many times until I finally arrived at a little technique that I actually have somewhat mastered and I actually like the results of. You can paint these roses in any color you'd like, really. It can be red, it can be pink, it can be blue, purple, whatever it is you'd like. You're gonna see me use a variety of different colors and these colors I just made along the way with the same colors that I have been sharing with you so far. Sometimes I just added more blue to my color mixture, sometimes I added more red, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you want to make sure that you start out with a nice, juicy, and pretty saturated color mixture on your color mixing palette with whatever color it is that you're going to be using, because that central most part of the rose has to be pretty dark and saturated. I am using my size 6 round brush for the entire petal portion of these flowers, and after loading it up with that saturated juicy color mixture, I started with touching just the very tip of that paintbrush onto my watercolor paper to create teeny tiny little C strokes that are gonna be the central most petals of that rose. And there is no specific way to start laying down those teeny tiny little C strokes. It depends on how you lay down the orientation of that initial little C stroke that you lay down. It can be, you know, cupping upward or to either side. It doesn't really matter. But once you have that initial C stroke drawn in, you can start creating the other C strokes around it, intersecting it somehow at some point throughout that curve, right? So you want those teeny tiny C strokes to touch somewhere and create that illusion of those petals slightly overlapping, slightly touching each other in that center. But at the same time, there has to be um, white paper in between them, right? So you have to kind of connect those C's and those petals, but you want a lot of white paper as well because it's that white paper that is going to create the separation between your different petals. So it's just like what I was telling you in the very first flower, I think it was, you actually want slivers of that white paper in between your petals or at least the majority of those petals because if they all merge together, then you're just gonna have a big blob of paint, a shape, and it's not really gonna look like a flower. So it's a balance between actually having the, those petals connect in some places and then leaving slivers of white paper in between them to create that separation. Okay, so you can see how as I am moving outwards from that central most section, I am starting to press down the bristles of my paintbrush on my paper a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more because this is going to help me create those very irregular, abstract, larger petals as I am moving outwards. And these are also sort of C strokes that I am using as I am moving outwards, but I am slightly uh, making them more abstract by moving my paintbrush in different ways. So I am going from more perfect kind of drawn out little C strokes in the central section. And then as I am moving outwards and I'm pressing down the belly of my paintbrush more, 
I am being a lot more irregular, a lot more imperfect as I am creating the, the illusion of those outer petals that are actually curving out in, in different ways. So I'm really just allowing myself to be loose and embrace that organic abstract shape that happens. Um, as I play around with the angle at which I am pressing down my paintbrush and just moving it in slightly different ways, you can turn back this video and notice how I am using my paintbrush in different ways so that I just organically, intuitively start creating those, those abstract petal shapes that get bigger and bigger as I move out. And another thing that I like doing is once that central most very deep and saturated color has been painted in, I actually take the time to dip my paintbrush in my container of water and then I remove the excess water and I continue painting the rest of the petals with a lesser amount of paint in my paintbrush bristles. This is going to help you create that illusion of that central most part of that flower being darker and those petals getting lighter and lighter as they move away from that central most part because by dipping your paintbrush in your container of water after you've just um, started creating that innermost portion of that flower, that new water content that gets absorbed into your paintbrush bristles, when you dip your paintbrush in your container of water, weakens that color. And as you're painting with one same paintbrush load, your color is gonna naturally start looking lighter and lighter as your color and water start running out from your paintbrush bristles. But if you find that as you're making your way outwards towards the outer petals, if you feel that the color still looks pretty dark and saturated, then you're probably going to be better off doing that dipping technique to weaken that color so that you can actually have a nice variation in in values and translucencies throughout those petals and not have all of them all throughout the petals be super dark and saturated. Okay, so after having painted in the petal portions of these roses, it was time to add in some leaves. I switched on over to my smaller round brush to add in these leaves with the same green color mixer that I have been using so far for all of these flowers. And because these roses are painted from a kind of top view, we're actually looking at these flowers from above as opposed to from the side or from a profile view, we can't actually see the stems of these roses because of this perspective that we're seeing them from in this case. So I'm painting in the leaves in a slightly different way, but I still have a lot of irregularity in mind. You can see how I left some little tiny highlights throughout some of them. And right here, I am actually going in and darkening some little bits here and there with a second layer of green, um, especially along the edges of those leaves that are closest to the petal portions of the flowers where I would imagine the petals would be creating a cast shadow on these leaves. And with that, we are all done with our five flowers. So as I said in the beginning of this video, I am super interested if you tried all of these out. I want to know which was easiest and which was hardest. Please make sure to leave it in a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really hope that you found some helpful nuggets in it, that you found it inspiring. And if you did, pretty, pretty please, I'd super appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and share with family or friends who you think would find it helpful as well. That really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and allows others to get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe so that I can see you next week for another video and keep on creating. Bye guys.